Alongside the Spitfire and the Hurricane in the Battle of Britain was the Bolton Paul Defiant, a fighter of a completely different concept. It was developed at a time when the RAF anticipated having to defend Great Britain against unescorted enemy bomber formations. Numerous advancements had been made in bomber development, and by the mid-1930s there was a new generation of long-range, multi-engine bombers emerging. It was assumed by many that the improved range, surface sealing and defensive armament of these new bombers would reduce the requirement for escort fighters, if not eliminated altogether, and so the need arose to develop a fighter that was capable of intercepting and engaging well-armed enemy bomber formations. The Air Ministry issued specification F935, which called for a twin-seat monoplane fighter with all of its armament concentrated in a rear-mounted turret that had a 360-degree upper hemisphere field of fire, the idea being that the aircraft would manoeuvre itself underneath an enemy bomber formation and fire its turret up into them, as the underside of most bombers was considered to be the weakest point of defence in terms of armour and armament. It was also thought that the wide field of fire from the turret would allow the aircraft to defend itself without the need for installing forward-facing weaponry. Seven different aircraft designs were tended to the Ministry from various manufacturers, one of which being Bolton Paul. The company already had experience in developing turret-equipped aircraft, having produced the Bolton Paul Sidestrand and Overstrand bombers, and they submitted a design to the Ministry designated P-82. Curiously, it looked quite similar to the Hawker Hurricane, except for the fact that it mounted a quad-gun turret on its back. The Air Ministry was impressed by the design, and the Treasury provided finance for the completion of two prototypes. The first prototype defiant, designated KA-310, conducted its maiden flight on the 11th of August 1937, however it did so without a mounted rear turret at this time. Bolton Paul had to compete against several other prototypes, chief amongst them being the Hawker Hotspur. However, its innovative turret design gained more and more positive attention from the Air Ministry, to the point where an initial production order of 87 aircraft was placed in April of 1937. The fact that the first prototype had not even flown by that date showed how keen the Ministry were on this particular design. The first production model of the Defiant conducted its maiden flight on the 30th of July 1939. By January of 1940, over half the original production batch had been completed, although several follow-up orders had also been issued between 1938 and 1940, which brought the new order total up to 513 aircraft. Now, the eagle-eyed viewers will notice a considerable span of time between the first flight of the prototype, April 1937, and the first arrival of production units to RAF squadrons in late 1939. This was partly a consequence of the RAF having ordered the aircraft essentially off the drawing board. During the development and testing of the pre-production prototypes, multiple changes were made and several improvements were made to the aircraft's turret design. Flight trials showed that the aircraft, despite its weird design, handled quite well and was remarkably stable, something highly desirable in what was essentially a flying anti-aircraft battery. However, these changes, modifications and trials all took time, which would have a detrimental effect on the aircraft's eventual effectiveness. The first Defiant Air Group became operational on December 8th, 1939, with No. 264 Squadron, well over a year behind plan. The Mark I Defiance had a crew of two, a pilot and a gunner, and were powered by a Rolls-Royce Merlin 3 V12 engine that gave them a top speed of 304 miles an hour. Despite looking similar to the Hawker Hurricane, the Defiant was considerably heavier, to the tune of almost 700 kilograms, and this top speed was considered quite good all considering. Part of this added weight came from the larger fuel tanks to give the Defiant an operational range of just over 400 miles, and the rest was made of course from the ball turret. The turret on the Mark I was hydraulically powered and was armed with four Browning 303 machine guns that had a healthy 2400 rounds of ammunition between them. Initially, the Defiance experienced quite a bit of success in combat, which in part was helped by their similar silhouette to the Hawker Hurricane. Groups of BF-109s would dive down on these supposed Hurricanes only to have the nasty shock of staring down the barrel of four machine guns. They also proved to be very effective in the designed role of shooting down enemy bombers. On May the 29th, 1940, 264 Squadron downed 19 Stukas, 9 BF-110s, and a JU-88. 
The Defiance also played a part in the evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force from Dunkirk, claiming between 12 to 15 kills. It was somewhat difficult to keep track of who had killed what due to the wide field of fire, allowing multiple Defiance to engage the same enemy at once. I imagine that would have been pretty terrifying for the aircraft on the receiving end. Unfortunately for the Defiant, these sort of victories were not to last. Through experience and word of mouth, German Luftwaffe pilots soon learned to avoid the rear turret and attack from the front and underneath, where the Defiant could not reply to their attacks. Changes in tactics were made in an attempt to lessen these threats, with Defiant crews flying in descending circles, trading the advantage of height for the advantage that the BF-109s were not yet submarines and could not attack from below at such low altitudes. Despite these efforts, losses still mounted, with 141 Squadron losing all nine airborne Defiants in one engagement in July 1940. The Defiant was heavy, its turret produced horrible drag, and it was hopelessly outmaneuvered by the more nimble 109s once they learned how to deal with them. By August, half of all delivered Defiants had been shot down, and the rest were slowly transferred into the night fighter role. Overall, it was far more effective in this role, being less vulnerable to direct enemy fighter attack in the cover of darkness. This is where the Mark II Defiance saw most of their service, alongside existing Mark Ones. The Mark II Defiant was fitted with an AI Mark IV radar and the Merlin 20 engine. They also had an extended operational range of 465 miles. This improved performance and kept the Defiant relevant as a night fighter during the Blitz. Using their new radars, flights of Defiance would track and intercept German bomber formations, at which point they would manoeuvre into a suitable position of attack, often below and slightly ahead of the bombers, or off to one side. Through 1940 and 1941 this proved to be a very effective tactic, and Defiance shot down more enemy aircraft per interception than any other RAF night fighter during the course of the war, though they did still take somewhat heavy losses. Again though, this success was unfortunately not to last too long. By 1942, German bomber development meant that most of them were now outpacing the Defiant, and it was decided to completely withdraw the aircraft from active combat roles, however it did continue to find use. Some were used as high-speed gunnery training aircraft, their ball turrets being well suited to the role. Some were briefly used for air sea rescue, though it soon proved very ill suited for that, and others were used as special operations aircraft. This was mostly to test out new radar and electronic jamming technology, with most of the missions being classified top secret at the time. In fact, the Defiant has the distinction of being the world's first dedicated electronic countermeasures aircraft. They were equipped with one of two systems. The Mandrel system was used to jam German early warning radars, and the Moonshine system was used to give enemy radar false readings. However, once again, the Defiant found itself being outstripped by newer aircraft in this new specialist role, and they were replaced in the specialist role by de Havilland Mosquitoes in 1944. Two Bolton Paul Defiants would eventually be used in 1945 by Martin Baker to test their revolutionary ejection seat system, and many more would be used as target tugs during the immediate years prior and following the end of the Second World War. Production had ended in 1943 with a total number of 1,064 Bolton Paul Defiance being built. <laughs>